the Texas Rangers have an issue, and that issue is injuries. Yep. And it feels like that's been an evergreen statement this season, right? It feels like we've been talking about it forever. I mean, you have three starters on the IL before you even play a single game as the defending world champs. Yeah, and then Josh Young gets hurt. Corey Seager gets hurt during spring training. You know, albeit they make it in time for opening day. Nathaniel Lowe doesn't, though. Like, it, it, it just felt like one of those seasons was brewing where you were going to be shorthanded for a good amount of time. And then yesterday and today were just absolutely brutal in terms of new injuries. Uh, yesterday, we were informed of the news that Dane Dunning goes to the injured list with a shoulder issue, 15-day stint. Uh, the plus side of that is that Bruce Bochy said he doesn't think it'll be much longer than the 15-day minimum. So hopefully that ends up being the case because we also heard that about Cody Bradford. They were very adamant when he went to the injured list uh, with his back issue that it was nothing more than that and he would just miss a couple of turns in the rotation. We'll be fine. That ended up not being the case because he had a stress fracture of some sort. Not going to be back for a minute. Then... We hear also yesterday, Max Scherzer had a setback and he has been shut down from throwing totally in his rehab assignment. So we don't know what the timeline looks there at all. We don't know when he's going to start to throw again because he's just been shut down until all aches, pains, discomforts, everything in between are gone. And then today happens. You saw Josh Spores exit the game yesterday in one of the two doubleheader games, the second game of those two that were played in Oakland yesterday at the Coliseum. Josh Spores ends up leaving the game. He only faced two batters uh, pitching in that second game of the doubleheader yesterday. His velocity was down when he issued a four-pitch walk and then had a 3-1 count on the second batter, got checked by an athletic trainer, and then left the game. And we find out earlier today that Josh Spores was placed on the 15-day injured list for the second time this season because of a right rotator cuff strain. Ooh, man. The, the, oh, no! The, uh, we suck again! <laughs> this the, is true. The injury... Ooh. I mean, do we even... Me and you, Alex, might have to start pitching. You know, you know what's funny? Before the season, not in a bad way, but Alec correctly predicted, hey, you're going to have some injuries. It just happens in baseball, especially coming off your shortest off season you just won the world series i like the michael lorenzen pickup i like all these kind of guys in triple a were getting geared up and in my head i was like okay maybe use one or two of these guys you know just to kind of give them some relief no it's been almost every other game there's a guy going on the 15 day list or the 60 day list right now you have john gray and andrew heaney is there any other starters that i'm remembering that aren't on some kind of injury designation lorenzen yeah, Lorenzen's one of them. They yeah. still have Jack Leiter up officially at the moment. Yeah. Jose Urania, but that guy probably needs to get sent down at some point. He's and, not injured, but and he's been bouncing back and forth too. He's he's been a reliever, but they need him to make spot starts because he has the ability to give you that range. Uh yeah, like in terms of consistent guys that you were going to rely on going into the season. I mean, Lorenzen, you didn't even have you know, on the opening minute. day roster, you know, he was very last minute. So um, I'm glad that CY did make that move, though. <laughs> you know, even though it was last minute, man, he knew we needed him. And, you know, it, it, it does add a little bit more sting to the whole Jordan Montgomery situation. It yep. does add a little more sting to the Dylan Cease situation. I don't think a lot of people realize how really real that possibility could have been of adding Dylan Cease to this team from the White Sox. The Padres end up kind of coming out of nowhere and getting him. Um, and that's a guy under team control that to this point has been good for, for the Padres and has been healthy. You know, there. so all that being said, there have been other options. Uh, there were ways to add. There were ways to try to add some depth. And you just didn't have it. And then, of course, people keep on uh, bringing up how fantastic Cole Reagans has been in Kansas City, which he has been awesome and good for him. I mean, you essentially traded him for a World Series, if you want to think about it that way. So I'm not too mad about it. But you think about the lack of, de of development overall for starting pitching by the Texas Rangers. And if you want to pivot to that conversation, that's what a lot of the discourse on social media was yesterday in the second game 
of the doubleheader where Jack Leiter started, and he got knocked around pretty early and pretty often. Yeah, you had no choice now. <laughs> you need Leiter to step up to the to the billing. I mean, I, this is funny. From the 817, funny to think when they said Lorenzen was close to being ready that I was thinking in my head, there's no room for him. And I was thinking the same. It's like, now yeah. we, we need you to be the room. Remember, we did a whole segment the <laughs> week that he got signed. We were on that weekend. It was you, me, and CA. Yep. I remember. I was like, what do you do with him? Yeah. Because he's going on foul territory with AJ Pruszynski and Scott Braun. Friend, I'm going to be a starter. Yeah, and he's like, I'm almost ready to join the rotation. And they're like, oh, so you're going to start. And he's like, yeah. He's like, nobody's told us that. We've asked Boach about it. We've asked CY. And it's just been, yeah, he's going to help us out a lot. You know, we we never got a straight answer, but Lorenzen's like, yeah, I'm going to start. And it was like, okay, is that a Cody Bradford? We don't trust you. And then out of nowhere, he tosses two gems in a row. And then, of course, he gets hurt. But two gems in a row from Cody Bradford. And you're like, okay, well, maybe he's not your quote unquote fifth starter. He's a guy that you trust more than a fifth starter at this point. And then he goes down. So there's been a whole lot of moving pieces and, you know, it, 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 it expands just past uh, starting pitching as well. We talk about Josh Spores. Uh, you can talk about Josh Young. You can talk about, I mean, Corey Seager still hasn't exactly looked like himself, even though he's playing most of the games. You're not seeing the same pop that you got from him last year, the same World Series MVP that you got last year. Uh, Nathaniel Lowe missed some time. Like... Adolis Garcia looks like there might be something kind of nagging with him. He he looks a little slower. He looks a little just kind of like something's missing here lately. And it, I know that uh, there was a couple games ago, there was a play that some people were kind of pointing at. Maybe like a leg was bothering him. Uh, and, you know, he's a tough guy. He's not going to want to sit down if he doesn't have to. And he had a shortened off season as well because he was rehabbing an injury. So injuries are just the storyline of it all and nobody's gonna fit nobody across the league feels bad for the texas rangers nobody and nobody, nobody should. should yeah yeah it, it honestly like for whatever reason g-bag was in here watching uh yankees and astros and the post game show is still on i haven't changed the channel yet but think about the astros they literally have an entire starting rotation worth of starting pitchers on the il right now like there are other teams that are just as beat up and it's an unfortunate thing, but the Rangers do lead the majors right at this moment with the most players on the injured list. You know, it's by a short margin. I think the Yankees have 12. We have 13 actively on the uh, injured list right now. And the Yankees and a couple other teams have 12. Mm -hmm. So it's not a huge disparity, but you know, we do have that unfortunate uh, record right now of being the most beat up team in baseball. And there's not a whole lot you can do about it. The the pitching injuries, we've talked about it. There's a whole discourse around that conversation right now of, you know, guys are being asked to do too much. They're being asked to throw for velocity rather than anything else. They're gripping the ball too tight and it's causing all of these things. But I mean, think about how different this off or how different rather this offense could look if Josh Young was healthy. Yep. You know, we don't really know what that would look like at this given moment. Like, he could be ice cold if he was healthy right now, just like some of your other hitters. I don't know. You know, but at least you have the benefit of the doubt of having a guy that should have been a gold glove defender at third uh, this past season. You have that peace of mind there. And then offensively, you've seen him have some pop. You've seen him go on other Started worldly off on stretches. A, on a heater. Exactly. And you've seen good things from him. And you've seen good things from pretty much everybody that's gone down on the injured list so far. And you think about a guy like Josh Spores, I knew something was up because he just didn't quite look like himself after he came off the IL for the first time this year. And now you see he just didn't have his velocity yesterday. Four pitch walks to start off his outing. You knew something was up and instantly they were able to point at the rotator cuff. So there, there's some some major hurdles that need to be cleared in terms of injuries. I do like the Robbie Grossman trade since we weren't on yesterday That's to talk about it. Trade. That's a solid trade because one, you're very familiar with them. Yes. You know, he you was on this team last series year. ring. It's an easy access. Thing yeah. Too. You don't have to wait until you play the white Sox anymore. He can just come pick it up at his home base now. But um, not only that you addressed a need. We suck at hitting lefties right we now. We do. You know what he did last year? He only obliterated lefties. He was an otherworldly hitter against lefties last year. Against righties, let's not talk about it. But against lefties, oh boy, he was really, really good. And at some points, you were seeing him in the two and three hole 
uh, against the lefties because he was that consistent against lefty starters. So, I, like, that that's where my peace of mind right now, to end this tangent, my peace of mind is knowing that Chris Young is not delusional. He's not a we-believe-in-our-guys guy. If this persists where guys cannot stay on the field, they cannot stay on the mound, he's going to make changes. He is going to make additions more specifically. He's going to help out his guys because we've seen it a handful of times this year. We've gotten some really good outings from some pitchers. We've gotten some really good outings from the bullpen. We've gotten some electric days from the offense. This is still a championship caliber team. They are their own worst enemy right now by not being able to have any sort of continuity in terms of the lineup and the rotation that they present on a weekly basis. With all that said, the Rangers are first in the AOS at exactly. 22 and Thank 17. You. Yeah. Mariners a game and a half back, Athletics four games back, Angels seven games back, and those hated Astros eight games back. And that's why I'm not sitting here saying the world is over, the exactly. season's done, you know, this team sucks. You know, like, do they suck at a few things right now? Sure, but that doesn't mean you're a bad team. I mean, I still don't think the Astros are a bad team. And look at their record. Their record, if you were a casual baseball fan, you pick up the paper and you read that, and you say, that's a bad team. That is still a team laced with all-stars. You know, that's not a bad team. That's a team that just, one, I don't think their manager is that good. And two, they just haven't played up to their standard. They'll get better. Watch. And me and Broadus were talking about it before Crosstalk. Look, he and he painted the picture. He's like, it's going to be a Saturday show where it's going to be you and Blake out there at, at the Globe. And it's going to be a game between the Astros and the Rangers. And the winner will take over first place for the AL West. Yeah. He was like, it's going to be later in the summer. And we're all going to look dumb for what we said about them early on in the season. I could totally see that happening. And guess what? You've only you played under 40 games this season. You know? There's not a lot that you can really freak out over. There's at no this reason given to moment. jump off a cliff. I think everybody on Twitter, we've seen it. They're jumping off a cliff right now. And I understand as a Rangers fan, but at the same time, just understand that we are so short into this season and there's so much that can happen, not only for the Rangers, but the entire league. I mean, all these injuries, they're not only affecting us. You said it earlier, Alec, and I think we saw a lot of not a, it wasn't you being negative. I'll, I'll go back to this. It's not you being negative here. It's you being real and telling people this is what's happening. This yeah. is honestly what the Rangers are dealing with. And at some point, you have to look at a lot of the bright side of it. And fans right now, I think they just want to, like I said, throw themselves off a cliff. See, from the 940, Rangers will be fine. From the 817, better that they're hurt now uh, than waiting until early September. Great The Tolos point. get it. Yeah. Uh, but from the 940, what about Kumar Rocker? He's also hurt. He's yep. coming back from Tommy John surgery, but he's going to factor into the future for sure. I don't think we'll see him till next year. Maybe September. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, from the 817, good news, y'all. Houston sucks. So uh, some good pitchers available to take soon. Yeah. I mean... Ken Rosenthal said it, I think, last week that the Astros might be surprise sellers if things keep going this way. Obviously, they won't give us any of them, but still, uh, some of their better players might leave the division soon. That would be pretty nice. So, there's your Rangers conversation that isn't a great one, but it's not the end of the world. Things will be okay. Guys are going to get healthy again, and we're going to be fine. I'm excited, for one, for Tyler Malley. I think he's going to be really good when he gets healthy. Yep.